What's up guys, it's Bumpkins. Today is Wednesday, April 6th. Wednesday means new comic book day. New comic book day means new comic book call video. As always, I went down to Infinity Plex here in Chattanooga, Tennessee for another it's slightly smaller stack of books and only uh, one extra goodie as well. So a little bit smaller of a week, but uh, still a really good one. Real quick before we get started, if you guys uh, live in the US and you are looking for a comic shop to start a pull list with, reach out to Infinity Plex. They will be tagged in this uh, in the description below. Uh, let them know you want to start a pull box. They will ship around the country. So if you want to start getting comics on the regular uh, and you don't have a shop or you need a better one, reach out to them and they can hook you up. But let's go and get started. Uh, like I said, slightly smaller week, but there's still some cool stuff in here. Starting with uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 238, the facsimile edition. I mean, I didn't really need this. If I wanted to read it, I could read it digitally. I think I've got it in an omnibus over there somewhere. But uh, I don't have the original, so I thought this would be cool to slip in the long box with all my other Amazing Spider-Mans and, uh, you know, fill that hole uh, because I don't have it. But uh, if you don't know, this is the first appearance of the Hobgoblin, and that was a whole big, long saga throughout the 80s and the early 90s with, you know, who is the Hobgoblin, and he's this person, no, he's that person, and... There's a lot of smoke and mirrors, but it's still really cool. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to get this. It's got all the original ads and everything. So, yeah, it's uh, it's a cool issue to have. Next up is Black Widow number 15, the awesome uh, X-Gwen variant. Um, I actually thought I dropped this a while back, but uh, it's still in my pull box. So, it's a good title, so I guess I'm just I'm just going to keep getting it. I am behind on it, though. So, I, uh, I, haven't I haven't... I'm behind on this newest arc. I read the first two arcs. And I haven't read anything past that, but I do have them all, I think. Or if I think it might be missing one, I can get it on Marvel Unlimited. But uh, yeah, it's a good it's a good series. The first two arcs were great, and I can't wait to see how good this arc is. Next up, Devil's Reign number six. This is the end of the entire Devil's Reign saga. We're done with the tie-ins, and now we're done with the main story as well. And this was pretty good. So you guys know, uh, I talked last week how uh, Dark Ages number six, it ended last week too. And I love Dark Ages, but I thought the ending was a little bit underwhelming. It was too easy. It was too quick. Um, there weren't a lot of big stakes or repercussions. Uh, this one was better. This was a better ending to this particular story. Um, we do get an interesting ending for uh, Daredevil and Elektra. They are going to go off in a cool new path. So we get a little bit of an idea about what the new series of Daredevil is going to be. And I really hope Elektra uh, figures into it heavily as well. I don't see why she wouldn't, but I hope she, hope she does. We, we get some really cool moments with a kingpin and an interesting ending for him that I didn't quite see coming. So um, I can't wait to see what happens with that when it eventually does, although it might be a while. And uh, some, some, other, some other cool things happen as well. But yeah, a, a much stronger ending for this than for uh, Dark Ages. But uh, yeah, this whole series has been really fun. The tie-ins were sort of iffy. But um, if they ever release a, a trade or some kind of hardcover with this and all the tie-ins, that's going to be a cool one to get. Next up, Fantastic Four, number 42. The what? I'm not sure which part of Reckoning War we're in, but it's just the next part of Reckoning War. And this one was pretty good as well. It's just, there's not a lot to say about this. It's just more uh, battles with, you know, Johnny and the Unparalleled are, are teaming up with um, uh, Hulkling and uh, Wiccan doing their thing. You've got Reed and Ben and She-Hulk and Jack of Hearts doing their thing. And of course... Alicia and the kids are at the Baxter building, so there's different little little subplots going on, uh, and they're all fine. What's really interesting about this, and I won't I won't give anything away, but I don't even remember what number it was because I read them all in a big chunk as I was catching up. But there was an issue of Fantastic Four from several months back where everybody in the team sort of got to see into their future to see how they would die, and uh, when when Reed saw his. His death, and this isn't a spoiler, this is this is a story from way back, and it was a future vision. But Ben's future vision, or maybe it was Reed's future vision, so one of them had a future vision about Ben killing Reed. And, and Ben was like, no way would I ever do that. Nothing that you could ever do would make me do that. And we get to see the reason what drove him to that in this issue. Now, I won't reveal how it's addressed and how it's resolved, but we at least get to see the reason, and that and, and that isn't even the, the biggest plot of this book. But when I saw that and I realized, oh, this is what drives Ben over the edge to do that, and it actually does kind of make sense. So I thought that was really clever, uh, although that whole thing is kind of wrapped up in this issue. So, you know, that's not going to carry on, or maybe it will. But uh, yeah, just another good part of the Reckoning War, uh, having a lot of fun with this. This is a good, this is another uh, good 
way to do a crossover like I talked about with Shadow War last week, how it's not this big major event, it's just a, a, a sort of a smaller event that's just crossing over between a few titles, but not a lot of tie-ins and other things. So um, yeah, this one is a lot of fun. Next up, Moon Knight number 10 with the awesome uh, Spider-Man variant. The, I don't really know what to say about this. This is just continuing. It's it's. If you've read this series so far, this is just in the same vein, more cool, just just more cool storytelling, good art, uh, mysterious. Uh, Moon Knight is, uh, you know, he, he's very sort of cool and calculated and, and still dealing with his dissociative identity disorder. You know, he's got a cool supporting cast. Um, I did like, so there was uh, two or three different villains in this um, that he had to go up against. And the way he handled one of them near the end was very cool and almost kind of creepy. And I really liked that. It showed his much colder side. Um, but I won't see anything more than that. So yeah, that um, the first half of the issue, I, I, I sort of had trouble sort of piecing together what was going on. Because it's been a while since I've read the last issue. But by the time we got to the end, that last battle, and then the aftermath of that, that was really, really cool, really interesting. This is still one of Marvel's best books. Next up, another facsimile edition, this one being Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man number one. Oh, no, wait, that's the real one. I got the facsimile too, but I don't know why, um, since I have the real one and, again, could read the first one digitally. But uh, I just wanted to get it, uh, just because I don't want to, you know, I've got this in a nice top loader. I wrinkly bag, but um, I just don't want to open it if I don't have to. So now I've got this that I can crack open and read. I like this run of Spider-Man, this series of Spider-Man. This is his, if you don't count Marvel Team Up, uh, this is Spider-Man's second um, series that he had well, with Spider-Man in the title. Although you could count Marvel Team Up because those were all back in the day. Those were all Spider-Man and somebody else as well. But this is the second Spider-Man proper title, debuted in 1976. And uh, there were some really good stories in this. Some some sort of lesser known villains in this one and it focused a little bit more on Peter Parker which I thought was really interesting. So yeah, just wanted to have the facsimile to uh, to pair up with the real one and that way I don't have to open this one anymore. I've got this one. In keeping with the Spider-Man theme, we've got Spider-Punk number one. Um, I didn't really care for this one. I, I really like the character of Spider-Man. I love the design of uh, Spider-Punk. I love the design of Spider-Punk. But I, this one just didn't really grab me. Didn't love the art. Uh, I just didn't love the story, although it is cool we get to see an alternate... Well, actually, I don't know if we've seen them before, but we got to see two uh, punk versions, the Earth-138 versions, of two other heroes. I won't say who it is, um, and again, I don't know if we've seen them before or not, but they look pretty cool. And those heroes go up against a, a cool group of villains called Craven and the Hunters. So, you know, this whole world, at least what we're, we see in the books, is based around punk rock and anarchy and that kind of thing. So we get to see that world's version of Craven. He's, uh, you know, he's sort of a punk guy as well, and he's got his own band, Craven and the Hunters. So they they fight those guys and have to try to figure out why they're doing that in the first place. It sounds really cool, but just the execution, I, I didn't I didn't love it. So I'm probably not going to get any more of these and just read them on Marvel Unlimited when they come out. I love the cover though, and I love the character, I love the design, I love the concept. Just this particular story didn't really do it for me. And then last up for Marvel, we've got Strange number two, another cool Spider-Man variant. Uh, I really enjoyed the first one with Clea as the new Sorcerer Supreme. We get more of that in this. This is a continuation of the first one. The, the cliffhanger ending of the last issue was really cool because a character that I really love who died, I don't even know when, but a long time ago, came back in sort of like a skeletal zombie form. And I thought, ooh, you know, I love that character. Maybe they're going to come back. Maybe... You know, Clea will do something to bring that character back to the living, and that didn't happen. So that character, I guess, is gone again. Uh, so that was kind of a bummer, but uh, still, uh, you know, I'm still really interested in this story. Uh, I really like Clea as a Sorcerer Supreme because she's a badass. She's the queen or the ruler, sorcerer, or whatever, of the Dark Dimension, and now she's Earth Sorcerer Supreme. So she's like a, she's got that one-two punch of super mystical power. So, um, and she sort of goes off in this one in the end. She sort of really goes off, which is a cool cliffhanger ending for the next issue. So yeah, I'm enjoying this. I think it's just a mini series. We all know that Doctor Strange is gonna come back at some point. Stephen Strange, I mean, um, especially with him having a movie next month. So all that's you know, we'll see how that all shakes out. But for now, this is a fun ride. As for DC, it was a little bit smaller of a DC week, but still some good stuff. Batman number 122. This is the next part of the Shadow War storyline, and I'm really enjoying this. Uh, we get we get a lot more Batman than we did in Shadow War Alpha. Um, 
Ra's al Well, I don't want to say anything about the first issue, but uh, Batman has some theories about who was behind what happened in Shadow War Alpha and why. Um, so he has to track down uh, somebody else. For that, we get some Robin and uh, Ravager interaction. We see more of Deathstroke and Respawn. Get a little action sequence with them. So uh, we've got different storylines. Just like with Reckoning War, you know, we've got... Um, a handful of, of different characters doing their own things and they're inev inevitably going to intersect. So yeah, this is I'm enjoying this. I don't remember, I think the next issue, the next part is Deathstroke Inc. I'm not sure if that's next week or not, but uh, I'm enjoying Deathstroke's role in all of this and there's some misdirection going on there. And like I've mentioned before, this is, this is how I kind of like my crossovers. It doesn't have to be this big event, it's just sort of crossing over between two or three different titles and a couple bookends with the Alpha and Omega issues or whatever. So yeah, this is a really fun storyline. Next up is Batman Beyond Neo Year number one. Now, I love Batman Beyond. I uh, I watched the cartoon. Uh, I've got the figure down. Now, well, yeah, you can sort of kind of see that. I've got the figure down here. Um, I, I, I love Batman Beyond, but I, I realized that I actually haven't read that many Batman Beyond comics or that many comics with Terry McGinnis Batman Beyond in them. I've read a few, but uh, it's never really been a mainstay for me, and I'm not really sure why. Because it's a cool character, it's a cool world, and this just makes it even cooler in this issue. This is a, a uh, I should have read Batman Urban Legends number 7. There is a Batman Beyond story in there. Batman Urban Legends is the anthology series. There's a Batman Beyond storyline in there that this, this uh, follows up on. And I haven't read that yet, so I probably should. But in this, Bruce Wayne has died or been killed. I'm not real sure which. Um, that's not a spoiler. That's already happened by the time you start this book. And uh, Terry McGinnis is kind of sort of on his own, trying to save, trying to save Gotham, trying to keep it from being taken over by this uh, big, you know, big evil corporation. Um, there is a cool fight with somebody I'm not sure if they're an actual villain, but they are a cool adversary, we'll say that, for Terry. So the artwork is amazing, too. Like, I saw this cover. This is just the A cover. I love the artwork on this. And, and when I first saw it, I thought, oh, man, I wish the interior art was that good. I just assumed that the artist here was not the interior artist. I was wrong. So this artist is the interior artist and it, it's really good. I just really like this. This was a lot of fun. Uh, so I'm definitely on board to keep buying this month to month. Uh, I want to learn more about the world and this new adversary that he's facing and see Terry's challenges. So yeah, I recommend this one. If you are a Batman or Batman Beyond fan, this is a good one. Next up is Flashpoint Batman Night of Vengeance number one. And really that's all there's going to be because this collects all three issues of the Batman storyline, the Batman tie-in for the Flashpoint event from around 2011, about 11 years ago. Um, and this is really interesting. So you guys probably know about Flashpoint Batman, how it's actually Thomas Wayne, not Bruce Wayne. How in the Flashpoint universe, Bruce Wayne and Martha were killed and Thomas took up the mantle of Batman. Uh, super popular character, as soon as he debuted, there was a reason that they brought him back so many years later. They had plans for him. There's another, there's a new Flashpoint Batman title coming, I think next week, a number zero next week. So they collected all three issues in this. Um, there's some cool things with the Joker that I won't go into in case you haven't read it. Um, so yeah, I read that digitally, so I haven't read this again yet, but I thought it was cool. If they're going to put all three parts into one single book, I'm going to get it. And then last up for DC is Suicide Squad number 14. So I do believe that Suicide Squad ends with number 15 uh, next month. So this is the penultimate issue. And it was okay. You know, I, every time there's a Suicide Squad book, I tell you guys how much I really enjoy it and how I'm, I'm kind of bummed that not more people are talking about it. This one wasn't as good. So this was the aftermath of the War for Earth 3. This felt a lot more disjointed than a lot of past issues have. I didn't really know what the characters were doing and it felt like they didn't know what they were doing either. And what I mean is it felt like they didn't know what their, what their goal was. Like, what are they trying to accomplish? Again, you have uh, different little factions of characters each on their own, different little missions, trying to accomplish a goal. But I don't know what that goal is. Um, and it's just, it just it just felt weird. It felt like they're just kind of phoning it in. You know, they know they have one issue to go. It's like when you have like a couple days left on a job before you're, before you're leaving. And you've kind of checked out. You don't really care. I kind of feel like that's what this is. So a little bit of a bummer. Not the best issue of Suicide Squad. But I'm definitely going to get the next one because i got to see how it all ends. Got just a few Image and other indie books as well, starting with Radiant Red, number two from Image. The first one was pretty interesting. This one was a little bit better, I thought. Uh, so this is following Radiant Red instead of Radiant Black. 
What's interesting about this miniseries is the Radiant Black book has been very um, cosmic almost. I mean, not everything is out in space doing all this big stuff. But we, you know, it's it's very mysterious. You know, you've got Radiant Black is doing some weird stuff in space, and then you've got this like giant robot thing talking to him, and it's all very cosmic and mysterious. Whereas this one, even though um, I think Satori is her name, uh, even though she is wearing a Radiant, I guess we'll call it a Radiant costume with with some crazy powers, this feels a lot more street level because she is being threatened by this group of criminals. Um, they are go they threaten to reveal that she robbed uh, several banks. For a total of two and a half million dollars, and if she doesn't work for them, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna out her. And um, they come to her with a proposal in this issue that if you do a job for us, we'll help you basically launder your money, and then you can just, you know, live life free and clear. And that feels a lot more street level than what we're used to from the last year or so of Radiant Black. So it's interesting though; it's not bad. Just a little bit of a different take on all the Radiant stuff, but um, but yeah, I like it. I'm gonna stick with it. Next up is Scorched number four, the cool X-Men homage cover. This is a connecting cover with number three, which was, uh, I don't remember which letter, but it was, you know, it was it was an homage with X-Men number one, the one where Cyclops and Wolverine are like shooting at Magneto. This is the the, the other one side of that, so, um, but I still haven't read any, any Spawn stuff, so it's going to go in my Spawn pile down here, but uh, I love these covers. I can't wait for the next one to come out. I'm going to put them all together and maybe try to compare them to the old X-Men and see how it looks. A couple other indies as well, Nottingham number six. So I actually haven't read the first five, but I do have them and I've heard a lot of good things about Nottingham. I just uh, I just got to sit down and read them. From what I understand, and you guys probably know better than I do if you've read this, but this is um, told from the sheriff of Nottingham's point of view where Robin Hood is the bad guy, I guess. Uh, it may be, it's probably more complex than that. But uh, it sounds really, really interesting. I've just got to sit down and read these. And then the last one is not new today, uh, but when my shop got there as originally, they were all damaged, so they had to wait for replacements. So I got it today. The last issue, Maniac of New York, uh, Bronx is Burning, number four. So the first series was five issues. This one was just four. Um, and I haven't read any of them yet, and I don't know why, because I really enjoyed the first uh, Maniac of New York story. The, my only problem was the ending was really underwhelming. Like, I wanted more, and um, but it made sense because we knew immediately after that that we were getting another another series, another volume. So uh, hopefully these four issues will enhance the original series. Uh, now, that they're, now that it's all done, I can just sit down and read them, and I hope I like it as much as the first one. But the fun doesn't stop there. I've got one extra goodie as well, and that is the Moon Knight Legacy trade paperback. This collects uh, Moon Knight... Uh, 188 through 200 so this is the run that immediately followed and was in the same volume as the Jeff Lemire run so I actually just finished reading the uh, the Bendis run of Moon Knight where he has the Captain America Wolverine Spider-Man personalities that was not a good primer for the show but I wanted to try to get in as much as I could and I wanted to do it in order too so uh, Moon Knight is huge right now I talked about um, Moon Knight number 10 earlier the TV show is out and it's super good so Moon Knight is just uh, just just having himself a time right now. So I just uh, am about to start. Like I said, I finished the Bendis run over the weekend. I'm about to start the Lemire, Jeff Lemire trade paperback. Uh, so I can't wait to crack into that. And then immediately following that, I'm going to do this. Since it's in the same volume, it's just the natural, natural next step. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited for it. I flipped through this a little bit. It looks like a crazy story, crazy fun story. Um, so yeah, Moon Knight Legacy uh, should be good. So that's it guys, a slightly smaller week, but still uh, some, some good stuff in here and some stuff that I didn't really love, but just because I didn't like it doesn't mean that you won't. So um, it's all just preference. So guys, I uh, appreciate you watching. If you like this video or any of the other videos on my channel, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it a sarcastic thumbs up. And if nothing else, leave me a comment below and uh, let me know what you picked up. Are you uh, having fun with all the Moon Knight stuff? Was it a smaller week for you, bigger week? Whatever you got, just leave me a comment. Let me know. I love comic books. I could talk about them with a room full of people or just to a camera. Guys, don't forget, comic books are supposed to be fun. There is uh, just there's plenty of stuff out there. You can go through it all, find the stuff that you don't like, and anything that doesn't really tickle your fancy, just simply ignore it and let everybody else enjoy that stuff. I didn't really care for the Spider Punk uh, title this week, and I'm just going to, you know, choose not to buy it for the rest of the time that it's out. But it doesn't hurt me that it exists. Also, guys, don't forget that uh, it doesn't matter how much you buy. What makes a great comic book haul is that the stuff that you do get, whether it's one book, 10 books, 100 books, whatever it is that you really enjoy it, that you're passionate about it, that you're excited to read it and, and, and consume it and, and, and just have it, uh, that's what makes a great comic book haul. So, guys, I appreciate you watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.